Hi, and we're glad you're back with us for episode four of World War Whiskey. Let's get into it. Some great scotch for you guys today. Uh, a Talisker 10 and an Ardbeg 10-year scotch. Uh, both very popular scotches. Uh, the Talisker here is an island scotch, while the Ardbeg 10 is an Isla scotch. Now, these might sound very similar, and in one sense they are. But let's crack these open and let's see what we think. The Technically, though, I should say this at the outset, the island scotches aren't really recognized or officially recognized as their own region of scotch. Uh, the Isla are. So, and it looks like Isla, if you were to pronounce it right from a phonetic English standpoint. Um, but it's Isla for these type of smoky peaty scotches. But the Talisker is an island scotch, so a little different. But the islands are a little bit uh, west and north of the highlands. And the Isla scotches are a little uh, southwest, so lower. Now, when we talk about regions of scotches, you're basically... This is my definition here, okay? You have the highlands, which tend to be smoother. The spay sides that tend to be sweeter. The islands that tend to be smokier, okay? Those are your big three regions. Now, as I said, the island aren't technically considered, uh, officially considered their own region of scotch, but many consider them to be. And these are going to be a little closer to these, even though it's technically considered a highland region but it is on the ocean. It's gonna pick up a lot of that sea salt and a little bit of that uh, salty, smoky kind of flavor, similar, in my opinion, to the Isla Scotches. Uh, and then as far as official regions, you also have the Lowlands, which there aren't many um, distilleries there. I think there's two. Um, and then the, there's Campbelltown, which again, aren't uh, there isn't a ton of distilleries there, but there are some good Scotches that are uh, coming out of there. I think that's all of them. I don't know if I missed any there, uh, but and then you, of course you have the Irish whiskeys, which uh, are obviously right next to them over there, but totally different methodology of making them. But let's get into these because these are going to be two popular ones. Very uh, a lot of followers to both of these, and uh, I told you guys last week I was going to bring you two very popular scotches, uh, smoky scotches, ones that had a ton of fans, and when I said that. Um, I did intend to bring you the Ardbeg 10. The Talisker 10 was a last minute fill in here for our old friend Lafroig, the Lafroig 10, who I plan on having on the show today. But as fate would have it, he was nowhere to be found. We could not find him anywhere in our whiskey cabinet. So somewhere between Christmas and moving things around and shifting decor, and relocating uh, our bird, trying to recategorize where I'm kind of keeping all the uh, Canadian whiskeys, Irish whiskeys, bourbon, trying to redo it. We lost Lafroy. So I thought Lafroy versus Ardbeg was the one I wanted to bring you guys. And I know the Lafroy has a almost like a cult following. But maybe, maybe it's better that we bring you this one because I think the Lafroy is uh, almost. Uh, so loved or hated, uh, Ardbeg might not have got a fair shake against it, or many may have felt that. We're gonna bring you Lafroy at some point once we find him, once we get over our first world problems of you know losing whiskey in our own house that we can't find it. But let's get into these two because I think these are, are gonna be very comparable uh, as far as uh, the audience that they're after. Now, the Talisker is a little more expensive so this is going to run you about $65 a bottle. And it the, the rank I looked up on it was about a 90 when I was reading about it. Uh, and the Ardbeg here is going to cost you about 50 bucks a bottle. And it scored a 93. In fact, back in 2008, this won um, a Scotch of the Year. Of the Year. That's pretty big. But, again, both of these are over 90. And as oftentimes you're going to see on this show, the higher score by the experts doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna win. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, but sometimes it's just variants of opinion, of course, but when they're tasting it, the environment, 
uh, with what they're tasting it. The reviewer themselves get higher scores and lower scores. So uh, be careful. I think scores are okay. Um, but, you know, one magazine could give something a 93 and another one could give it an 80. I mean, you're usually not going to see that kind of variance. But keep in mind, we're doing them head to head. This should be the fairest comparison. And like I said, even if I pick one over the other, I'm going to try to give you a, I'm going to try to give a fair shake to both, but try to give a fair analysis to help you buy the right one for you. So even if yours doesn't win, you might say, hey, the way he described that sounds more up my alley and I'm going to go and check it out or go purchase it. So we're here. We just want to have a fun time testing scotch, but we also want to just provide something for you guys, the audience, and uh, let you see what you like. And in fact, if you're in the SoCal area, uh, some guys have been hitting me up, but if you're in the SoCal area, hit me up. I'd love to have you on the show. Bring a whiskey on that you like and you want to compare against one of the whiskeys. I'll help match it up. Say, hey, I think this will be a fair one. So let me know. If you got some, come along. We've uh, been trying to set up some dates and times. It's always hard to plan out a, a, you know, to, a time to record, but we'll make it happen uh, if you're around here. So. Uh, just comment and also even if you can't come on say you're far away put a comment uh, on the video let us know another episode of what you'd want to see tested we'd love to hear from you but right now let's get into these scotches so first off oh man the sweet aroma of uh, smoke and scotch um, coming from the some of the bourbons and Irish whiskeys that we've uh, been tasting um, and not all of these are have been aired yet and recorded but um this coming from those is it just has that strong powerful aroma but one that i i typically enjoy so it's not an overpowering smoke but it just it has a um a definite scotch uh but a definite uh i don't want to say what pops in my head was like a Johnny Walker Black. It has that type of definite smell, but it's not exactly a Johnny Walker Black. And I think this is probably going to be better than Johnny Walker Black, even though I think Johnny Walker Black is great uh, for just a blended scotch. I think it's great. But this has a little bit of a sweeter smell to it. But let's taste it. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Wow, this is good. Okay. Um... You know, the smoke definitely hits you. Um, it's a little smokier than I was anticipating here. Um, this is 45.8%, uh, so not a 46% like you often see, 45.8%. And I forgot to add water to this. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit because it was a little bit harsh, but I, I don't mind a little bit of harshness. So um, we're just gonna do a couple drops in there. Again, you don't need a ton of water in the whiskey um use something to open up the aromas on these single malts but see if that changes it at all mm. yeah it's kind of weird just a little bit of water softened it and opened up some of the flavors so gosh that's that's definitely a good scotch um this might be the best whiskey we've had on yet um i can't say for sure because i'm not tasting them head to head but this is this is a really solid scotch, uh, Talisker 10, good job. Um, this is gonna be one that I, I know it has a $65 price point, um, which you can get a lot of good scotches out there um, for a lot cheaper. So it's hard for me, you know, if I'm gonna go and just not have something special going on, for me to pay $65 for a scotch, you know, it's, hey, I can get some really good stuff for 40, right? Just like this, uh, about, I think this was 48, 49, 50 bucks you're gonna pay. Um, but had I paid 65, which I did, <laughs> you know, and just that was my only bottle and was drinking it with some friends, I, I don't think I overpaid. I'm not gonna feel like I overpaid. I'm gonna feel like I got some good scotch. So, um, sweet strong I would have thought it's an Isla Scotch um, I have had one Talisker before the Talisker Storm and in fact if you have that one I haven't been able to get it I finished the bottle I liked it so much and I haven't I saw it once 
I went back to get it a few days later. It was gone. I haven't been able to get my hands on it. So if you have Telestra Storm and want to come on the show, bring it on. Let's have it go head to head. I might be able to find another bottle, but if, if you have one, hit me up. Let's make it happen, okay? Mmm. That's great. Great stuff. All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to rinse real quick. I'm going to give Ardbeg a taste here without any water. So these are both 10 years scotches. And let me say something about the peat real quick. And this one doesn't have as much of a scent as the Talisker does. Not as strong. This one's a much, way more mellow. Way more mellow. What I was gonna bring up about these is peat. And what is peat? But let's taste this first. Hmm. You definitely taste the peat in that. The ash and the smoke, pow, right? Okay, we gotta add some water because that is overpowering might add a few more drops, but I'm going to see how that does. That's overpowering the smoke. And the smokiness comes from peat, which the best way I describe peat is it just looks like dirt. Dirt with some grass in it, okay? But it's actually some organic vegetable matter that's broken down over hundreds, if not thousands of, year, thousands of years. Um, and as you decompose it, what they do is they, when they get all their grains in there and they heat up, the oven to ferment uh, and kind of there's all these processes to the whiskey so I'm not going to bore you with all these processes and I'm not an expert on them myself but what they do with the peat is in the first stage of it they put this dirt you know this organic plant matter throw it in there uh, it's not dirt it's called peat so it is different but I mean if you looked at it you would just think that's some dirt with a little bit of grass mixed in it but it's its own thing right so you put this peat in um, and it's there kind of by the seashores, you know, uh, by the water. So it kind of takes on a certain scent. And as I said, kind of a, get that sea salt kind of flavor going on, smoke going on. And the smoke comes from, they put it in there and they burn it. And as they burn it, uh, the odors are absorbed by the, so, so the smoke kind of gets absorbed into the grains. Um, and then as it ferments, it just has that flavor kind of intact in there right stuck in there so that's what gives it this smoky peaty flavor so if you don't like scotch and a lot of people don't like scotch for that very reason they say it's like a leather boot or you know it's too smoky for them they prefer bourbon which is much more you know a little smoother sweeter type of thing going on um if you don't like that these two aren't for you okay because both of these are going to be a little strong but don't give up on scotch because if you go and get a space side or a highland some of these milder ones you know, they're very different. They're, they're as different from this as bourbon is, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, if you don't like the smoke, go get a space side, go find a Highland, uh, something like a Glen Levitt, um, you know, that's just going to be a lot more unoffensive, okay, uh, if that's what you're after. But these, these are for the guys that just, they really want the heavy hitters. This is, this is it. Mm. So, again, um, it's amazing how chemistry works. The water just totally smoothed that out. Just a few drops. Um, smoothed it, mellowed it out a little bit. Um, on that one, the flavors didn't really open up as much for me with the water. I'm not sure why. This one, it did. The, on the Arbeck, it just kind of smoothed it out for me. Same kind of flavor because it was just kind of without the water. just real harsh and, and kind of punchy in the mouth kind of flavor. Um, but I, I kind of like the, se the second one. I feel like I could I could give to somebody who's uh, who likes scotch but isn't ready for that. They could probably handle it. Where without the little bit of water, I think it'd be overwhelming. Almost like Laphroaig. If you've had Laphroaig Ten, you know it just has that punch in the mouth, pow, like overwhelming. The Ardbeg Ten came on like that for me. Um, I'm not sure if it's quite as strong as Laphroaig. Little different flavoring from my memory I'm not taste them here head to head but um this one has a little bit of a like some more fruit notes going on the Freud is just all smoke all ash but this one definitely has some smoke and ash to it some spice some pepper definitely a definitely a a strong wood. 
I don't. I'm not sure. I know bourbons a lot of times they age them in oak. I don't. I'm not 100 percent what they're um, aging these in, and I know they, you know, they range from sherry casks to bourbon barrels. They switch it all up, but um, I'm not picking up that oak kind of bourbon flavor that I a lot of times taste in bourbons. But uh, definitely a strong wood flavor of some sort. Um, so again, great, great whiskey, great scotch here on the Art Big Ten. Uh, this is tough. This is the toughest decision yet. And I think every week is, so far, has not been easy. You know, it takes me a few times to really sense who's winning. But this, they're two different scotches, but both fat. Excuse me, both fabulous. Going back to the Chilisker here. The Chilisker is more refined, more smooth, a little bit more fruit floral uh, flavors coming through, and a very good aftertaste just lingers and leaves you wanting more. It has a very distinctive flavor profile too. Kind of unlike, um, kind of unlike any other scotch I, I I can recall. This is, and again, it's an island scotch, and there's not a ton of island scotches if you just go to the store and look on the shelf. So it has that sea salt smoke, you know, sometimes a leathery um, profile that scotch gets. It has that, and that the especially the Isla scotches get but not overwhelming so it's kind of a kinder gentler isla if you will um again these are my definitions i don't want to i don't want people to think that, that you know all island scotches are just a kinder gentler isla not necessarily uh i haven't tried them all to know but between these two and between the uh islas i've had which i've had many um the island here is kind of a happy medium if you will if you really don't want the peat monster just kicking you in the mouth, but you still want that flavor that the peat brings, that the kind of uh, sea, you know, the air and sea and salt and sea brings to it, it this is good. These are the first ones that I've seen scores 90 that I've said, yeah, you know what? These might be 90s. It might be 90s. Very good. Very smooth. Uh, $65. I think I think that's about right for this for this one. Um, I don't know that it's worth way more than that. You know, if it was $100, I'm going to probably go with Lager Woman, $16. Um, again, we'll see when we get there. If, you know, I, that's one that's very popular, one that I love, but... When it hits them head to head, crazy things happen. Things you think you like change and things you didn't think you like change. So we'll have to see when we get there. But at $65, I think this is right. At $40, about $50, I think I said, uh, this might even be better for $50. If you like strong, manly scotch, right? But is it better, price point not brought in, is it better? Okay. These ones are very, very different. As I said, kind of smooth, refined, uh, sophisticated. This is the one you're gonna take at the dinner table with you on a high-end dinner and uh, eat with some steak, some uh, pork, uh, some chicken. If you, it, It's going to go well with just about anything over dinner. Uh, neither of these, let me say this, neither of these you really want to want to mix, okay? I wouldn't. If you had to, if you are mixed scotch with stuff, to Lisker over this, because this is going to overpower whatever you put it in. But both of these are going to be ones that you're going to drink neat or on the rocks. Um, and when I say on the rocks, I'm talking about, you know, whiskey stones. Um, you could drink it over ice. Uh, 
uh, it's probably gonna change it a whole lot if you do it's gonna really mellow it out uh, so I, I would really say hey if you drink these drink these neat a little bit of water in there and it's gonna really come alive for you um, to be honest these are about equal for me uh, like I said if I'm eating dinner this is the one I'm gonna pick if I'm just hanging out with the buddies and we just want to give them something to just knock their socks off and make them go, whoa, then it's going to be the Otter Bed 10. But we got to pick a winner. Unfortunately, one of these beauties is going to go home and one's going to go on. And I think whichever one goes on is going to do well. I'm not going to even rinse between these. I just got to see the difference. I got to see because I... I'm torn. I gotta do one rinse to give, to make sure I'm right. I think I know my answer, but we gotta go in reverse order. To Lisker or Ardbed? Island or Isla? Just great. They just really nailed it on this one. Here I am in the middle of a video and I can't decide. I can't decide who goes on and who goes home this is embarrassing I can't you know I can't edit this out this this, this we're in the midst here we're at the end this is this can't be redone but I don't know I'm I think these these are like two great different yet equally good scotches we gotta do one more, you know? I know a lot of you guys think I'm doing this just to get more alcohol, but I thought I knew and then I didn't. And then I didn't. I, that's, I've switched back and forth in my mind three times, to be honest with you guys here. Um, just because they're so, they're both really good and they're both really different. Um, so, The aftertaste of the, I don't know if I mentioned that, the aftertaste of the hard bed, it's definitely a little harsher, a little more alcohol. I think this is a 46%er as well. Um, I don't see on here. Oh, there we go. Yes, this is a 46%er as well. So 46, 45.8, basically 46. Not a big alcohol difference there. Um, I don't know. Should we end up with a tie? I don't. You can't. We only got two. I'm out of water. I can't even properly rinse. All right. We got a pick. Guys. can't decide. I really can't decide on this one. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to call it a draw. I'm going to bring one of you guys in to help me judge these. And uh, whatever you say, whoever my co-host is between these two, whatever they say, that's what's going to move on. Because that's how close these two are in my mind. You know, if I had to score them, I would give them a solid 90. Um, I believe I said Ardbeg had a 93, Talisker had 90. I think that's where the magazines rated them. Um, you know, if you gave that a 93, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you're lying. Uh, for me, I've had some darn good scotches throughout the years, so I, I tend to reserve 90s and 93s even especially. Uh, 
but th these are these are definitely 90, 91, 92 in that range for me. So for now, we'll end it with this. If you're after subtle, smooth, refined, so let's use your man. If you're after the punch you in your mouth, strong, burly man, leathery, ashy, smoky, tobacco, even little hints of that in there, our big 10. And usually I'm that guy. I'm usually that guy to go with the, the stronger, right? But the Talisker did such a good job of, of that, of, of, of making a very solid, smooth, uh, tenure Island whiskey that, uh, I can't just say because this is smokier or peatier or has more of a kick to it that I'm going to pick it. So right now it's a draw for me until we get one of you guys on to settle the debate. So right now we're here. We're in limbo. We'll see you next week. And I will have a decision for you. No more ties. I promise you that. But what can I say? These are both great. Pick one of them up. You're going to love it. We'll see you next week.